fellow scrappers, YouTubers, folks of all sorts watching my channel. Welcome back, by the way. Time for another viewer Q&A video. Uh, I do these periodically. I answer some of the most asked questions in the comments and emails I get about my videos. So this is going to be Q&A number three. I hope you can hear me over the span. Sorry. Um, it's uh, early July here in Florida. It's early in the morning, but it's already hot as blue blazes out here. Rained all night. The humidity is stifling, so I've got my big fan going. I think I've got arranged, things arranged, so hopefully you can hear me okay. We'll see. <clears throat> so first and foremost during uh, QA here, we've got some old business to take care of. Um, back a week or two ago, I put out the video where I announced the winners of my 10,000 subscribers sweepstakes. And they were, uh, Larry Matthews won the grand prize, and Shane York won the second prize. I need you guys to get in touch with me so I can send you your prizes. Um, I know Shane's been trying. Um, YouTube apparently is not the best uh, platform for exchanging messages between people, because he says he's been leaving me messages, but I'm not seeing them. So I'm going to, for you guys, I hope Larry, you see this too, and Shane... I'm going to put my uh, email address up in this video. You guys email me. We'll chat. We'll figure out how to get your prizes to you, okay? So, uh, yeah, YouTube just, for some reason, the messages just aren't coming through. So, we'll, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. We'll resort to email the 60-year-old the, uh, technology, okay? All right, so we got that out of the way. Um... I'm taking a little break from processing Ken's chips uh, to do this video. Uh, I'm working on a couple of experiments of my own back here in the fume hood that are probably going to become future videos. One or two of them I think you're going to find very interesting um, since they look like they're turning out okay. At least one of them is. Um, yeah, speaking of uh, Ken's chips, I hope you're enjoying those videos. A few of them have dropped by now. I think at least the first three or four. So um, by the time this video comes out. So that's going well. I am hitting a little bit of a snag though. We have a distilled water shortage in Florida. The grocery store shelves are empty of distilled water. The grocery store shelves are empty of a lot of things. The supply chain issues have hit urban Florida. Um, I was having this problem when I was out west um, a couple months ago at my place in Arizona and I needed distilled water for my batteries out there for my solar power system. I'll put a link to that video in the upper right. You can check it out if you like. It's on my second channel. Um, none of the little towns out there had distilled water and it took me quite a while to find some. Well, apparently that shortage has hit here. So I am without distilled water at the moment. I'm going to try going forward with the ionized water and we'll see how well that works but I would prefer to have distilled water. So anyway, that's just a little bit of an update. Old business and an update. So um, let's get yeah, right into the most asked questions and comments I get here. And number one lately, this is an issue which has raised its ugly head again, although it's not that ugly. It's a debate over whether I should just be spooning SMB into the Regis solution to drop the gold, or should I dissolve it in water first and then pour it in, okay? There are two camps on that, and they both uh, staunchly believe in their way of doing it, okay? Well, dissolving the SMB in water first works great. Uh, it's just an extra step that I'm generally too lazy to take, because I'm usually busy doing two or three different things at one time, and I don't want to have to, you know, dissolve liquid in water first and then pour it in. And a lot of times I don't have the extra room in the beaker for a lot of water when I'm dropping some gold. So um, I generally don't dissolve the SMB in water first. Now, the reason dissolving the SMB in water first works so well is because when you pour it in, you're further diluting the uh, aqua regis solution, and that helps bring the pH up and that really helps the gold come out of solution, bringing the pH up. If the pH is way down low, the gold's not going to want to come out of solution. So, 
I just spoon it in, but normally I ice down my aqua regis solution before I filter it. So that has the effect of diluting it once all that ice melts. So I'm kind of already getting the dilution effect. So further dis you know, dissolving the SMB in more water and dumping it in really isn't going to make that big a difference, maybe a little bit, but like I say, I often don't have the room in the beaker because I've already diluted the solution with ice, okay? So basically, I'm already doing the dilution part. I'm just not dissolving the SMB in water first. Either way works, okay? There's no, you know, hard or fast, right or wrong way to do this. Either way works. So whatever works for you, you go ahead and do it that way, okay? I'm just going to stay lazy and just spoon it in. See, that works for me. But I've already diluted it anyway. Okay, so the first uh, video or two of me processing Ken's chips is uh, gone live. And of course, I get the, the question, why didn't you just pull the steel out with magnets? Okay, because I'm spending a lot of time and chemicals getting rid of the steel in the pulverized remains of Ken's chips. Well, I tried to explain that. I, I've been doing this for a few years now, and in the beginning, I would pull the steel out with magnets. And I kept that stuff. Fortunately, I didn't throw it out. Okay, I kept it in a bag, and the bag got fuller and fuller and fuller. And one day I'm like, why am I keeping this? Maybe I should throw it out. And I thought, well, let me just see if there's any gold in this okay so just for S's and G's I thought I dissolved all of that steel I kept I kept on hand from pulling pulling it out magnetically from the IC chip debris dissolved it all with acid and uh, processed the sludge that was left and there was a surprising amount of gold in that sludge and I'm like oh I'm glad I didn't throw this stuff away um, it is kind of a pain in the butt to have to dissolve uh, away the, the, the steel to get the gold. I think what happens is the gold bond wires in the IC chips get wrapped around the steel wires and in the internal framework of the IC chips when you're crushing them. Or they get wadded up, you know, the, the steel parts get wadded up and they entrain gold inside them. I mean, it's not a huge amount of gold, but it's more gold than I personally would want to throw away. You know, is stuck in that steel part. So I didn't pull the the gold out with magnets. So I didn't pull the steel out with magnets. You know, like so many people are suggesting, I just should have done. I left it in there, and I'm dissolving it away with acid, so that the gold that's entrained in that steel is gonna be left in the mud in the bottom of the beaker, and I can process it with the rest of the gold that's there. So we get all the gold out. It's an extra few steps. It's some extra chemicals, it's some extra time, it's some extra pain in the butt, but hey, you know, it's not costing me that much in terms of money, it's costing me more in terms of time than anything else. And it's a trade-off you'll have to decide on your own. Is it worth, you know, the time and the little extra cost to uh, get that gold that's entrained in the steel or just throw it out? You know, that's up to you. Everybody's got to make their own decision on this, okay? So I hope that answers that question. Until the next time people who haven't seen this video start asking it. All right. Um, new nitric acid source. I think I mentioned in my last QA video, and I'm sure I mentioned, I think I went on to a little bit of a rant about it, that um, you can no longer buy nitric acid on eBay, and my supplier was on eBay and that was about the best deal I could find anywhere, but of course they don't sell on eBay anymore. In fact, as far as I can tell, they don't sell anywhere. I think when eBay banned nitric acid sales, they went out of business. So, but I have a new nitric acid source. Um, I'm pretty happy with their price and their shipping. And um, I'll put a link. It's called uh, Excello, and I'll put a link. Um, in, I'll put a link in the description of the video. Uh, so you can check them out and see if you want to buy from them. Um, I have bought some from them and it was a pretty smooth, painless transaction and the shipping was really not that slow and it was free because I bought enough to get their free shipping. And even though it's, you know, it's a hazardous material, 
they will still ship it free if you buy enough of it. So check them out because uh, I get a lot of questions about nitric acid. Um, I have a lot of videos about making my own nitric acid. I do from time to time make my own nitric acid, but I wanted to buy some just to have it on hand because I knew I was going to have a big job of doing Ken's chips and I've got a couple of other big jobs I need to do of my own stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to need a lot of nitric acid and I'm not going to have time to make it. So I bought some. So anyway, check them out. Um, you might uh, you might find their their price and delivery um, to be agreeable too. You need some nitric acid. Sorry, you folks outside the U.S. I know nitric acid's hard to come by, but like I say, I've got a lot of videos on how to make your own, and um, I get um, comments and emails all the time from people who have made their own nitric acid using my techniques, and they are just ecstatically happy to have some nitric acid on hand in countries where they can't buy it. So, you know, if your government won't let you buy it, make your own, all right? All right, and then another question I get a fair amount is from people, it's like, help me identify this. I've got this material that's left over from, oh, processing gold ore, or from processing e-waste, or whatever, and I can't figure out what it is. Can you help me identify it? Well, generally through an email, no. I can't help you identify it, okay? What can help you identify it, though, is the Stannis chloride test. The Stannis chloride test is your friend, okay? So, if you've got some sort of, you know, metallic seeming material and you don't know what it is, you can't identify it, try dissolving a little bit of it in aqua regia and do a Stannis chloride test on it. Alright? Stannis chloride is your friend there. And I will put a link to a website that has a really great explanation of um, the different colors you'll see with different metals in solution using Stannis chloride. So, you know. Yeah, if you've got something, you don't know what it is, try dissolving it in nitric acid. See if that helps. Uh, do a Stannis chloride test. Try dissolving it in aqua regia. If it won't dissolve in nitric acid, do a Stannis chloride test. Um, if you want to know if you have silver in your, um, in your solutions after dissolving stuff, put a, little, a few drops of the liquid into um, tap water that has chlorine in it. You see a white cloud, you've probably got silver there. So, yeah, there's some easy tests you can do. The Stannis chloride one is really, really useful. I have a video about how I make Stannis chloride solution. I'll try to remember to put a link in the upper right so that uh, you can check that out. And, oh, the sprinklers just came on out in the tree farm. And I think my camera's set up where it's going to get wet. So I better bring this to an end. Um, I think that is pretty much all of the issues. So remember, Larry Matthews, Shane York, get in touch with me via email. It's up at the top right now. It's also, I'm going to put it in the description, I think. I may have to edit that out in the future so I don't get a lot of spam. But get a hold of me so I can get you your prizes. All right, well, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe to see my future videos. Got lots more videos coming out on uh, processing Ken's chips. We're getting down to the nitty gritty on that. We're going to start seeing some real gold soon. Um, I got, like I said, the experiments going on in the fume hood that are going to be very interesting to you. Here comes the sprinklers. Um, and uh, always good stuff going on on my second channel, Electric Heat 64. Check that out. Subscribe both places. Press the little bell icon. YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.